All right, I'm going to call this meeting of the ordinance committee uh, to order January 27th, 2022 at 6 p.m. Um, this meeting is being held remotely due to COVID-19 restrictions. Um, and we don't have any minutes to approve since this is our first official meeting besides our organizational meeting. Mm -mm. Hey, Salem. We don't have, and we don't have any public here for the web. I, I, my thought for tonight. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You were just, you lagged out for a second. You're back. Okay. Am I back? Yeah. Okay. I got the, your internet connection is unstable. Yeah, Lindsay. Um, but Barb said I'm supposed to do minutes from the joint public hearing as well. Is that right? Yeah, I went on, I went on that I wasn't thinking about that during the meeting and I went on to look, the video's not posted yet just to get like the details out. I'll, I'll, I'll put that. You have, you have 30 days, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, don't stress too hard on that. Um, but, you know, what I was thinking for tonight was I was thinking um, since we have you in the committee, Lindsay, it would make sense to maybe talk a little bit about the ordinance re um, review committee's um, recommendations um, just to kind of like, maybe give an overview of um, of what you guys did. And um, I was thinking that would be a good starting point for us <clears throat> so we could like make a game plan because I imagine as I was looking at it, um, we haven't talked about it at all, but as I looked at it, I, like there are some, some of them are just no brainers, like super, super easy. Like we can just easy, easy. And some of them we just need to, you know, we'll need to strategize a little bit about. Um, and uh, and I wanted to get you caught up on where we're at with the vacant storefront ordinance um, as well tonight. And then I figured that what we could do from there is set two meetings, one to, you know, really hammer into the um, ordinance recommendations and just have them as a package so we can, um, you know, bring all of them forward. And then uh, another one to really start putting work in towards the um, Toward the uh, vacant storefront ordinance. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, sounds great. Perfect. So I, I just I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, oh, go ahead, Tom. Just so I was also on uh, the the ordinance review committee, and, and just one thing oh. is like, I, I think it'd be great to have a meeting where we dig into it. But just with all of the recommendations that we have, I feel like the. I mean, Lindsay, let me know if you disagree with me on this. So sort of the, 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 the thought that I, that I had coming out of here is that, like these weren't necessarily going to be things that we all get done in like a, a batch. It might be that like, you know, it's like we pick them up, like maybe we, we identify a couple that we work on. And then once we got something done, we identify a couple more. Some of them are really easy and we could just get done like very, very quickly. Some of them are like, you know, going to be like more involved conversations. Sure. Um, and, and I think I think that if we have a dedicated meeting for that, we can pick out the, the, the low hanging fruit and bring those forward. And then we'll just have like the, the meaty ones that we can dig into after. So it just just to kind of like clear the plate a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Sure. Cool. Some of them are just language, um, like keeping swine. And some right. of them need a, you know, more specific. Some of them we'll probably need to reach out to somebody about. So those will be the ones that won't be as easy. Yeah, because it seems like the um, in the wage theft ordinance, the thing about the veterans that like that is a state piece, right? It, it's from like the, it's state language. So that part was like reaching out to our state reps to see if they could make that language more inclusive. Um, is that correct? Or am I, is that something we could do locally, do you think? I think that the thought that we had was to maybe seek, uh, you know, when we have the budget for it, seek uh, like solicitor uh, feedback on how that how that interacts with the state language and like what actual leeway we have there. And yeah, that's true that like um, we could always like the, the output from that. If the answer is like, no, there's really nothing we can do right now. The output might be to reach out to the delegation right. um but i think that the first thought was just to be like what like what leeway do we actually have locally can we broaden it yeah yeah because yeah. that so, was you know, unclear yeah and generally you know the, the 
Um, we can be more, as ordinances go, generally we can be more restrictive, but we can't be more inclusive as it relates to state things. But I think it does make sense to have the solicitor look at that because that, you know, this might be a different type of situation. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so, and then, um, you know, so anyway, so that's, that seemed like the biggest, meatiest one. Was there any other like um, pieces in there that stood out to you guys that you thought we wanted to um, kind of pull out from the, the low hanging fruit? Um, I think chapter five, um, like most of it's outdated. So it would just take a little bit more um, kind of thought, like, do we, like, what do we want to do about garage sales? You know, it's not just like, we have to get some other input from Barb and other people. Yeah. Um, um, I agree that the garage sales, it seems like one that, that I'd prioritize just because from Barb's feedback, the current system of, of licensing, like I'm working. It's well, yeah, it's just it's a lot, it's like a bunch of paperwork and the chart for five dollars is like, is like five dollars. So it's like it doesn't even make sense because we're like paying someone way more to yeah. do this, like this processing than we're actually getting out of and it. And it's not really enforced like when people don't do it. So it's just like yeah. Like really, like uh, like real do like follow the rule type people like go in and do the pay five dollars and <laughs> <laughs> and then like ninety percent of the people don't and they just hang their signs on telephone poles. You know? Yeah, they don't. It's just, like they don't even know. Like I think right. I had garage sales like pre city government. I didn't even know you we were supposed to pay five dollars. <laughs> right. Okay, so that's a good one to to put on the list. Yeah. Um, let me see. I'm I'm trying There's to. There's also something about signs. Um, chapter yeah. eight, like there was a lot of like wording about signage that we didn't know if it was relevant or and the ones that only the whole chapter eight, like it only relates to nonprofits and like, you can't do she, you, I think it was something like you aren't allowed to see it from a park or it, I don't know. It was like, just needed a little, <laughs> it needed a little bit more fleshing out. <laughs> right. And is that where we were, um, trying to see if I can find that spot because chapter eight. 8.76, uh, only nonprofit organizations. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I think that's, we spent, I spent, I think maybe three years on the sign or. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it, was, okay. it was a really, because it was, we did like our, our city collaborative kind of approach with it. Mm -hmm. And it was a long, drawn out process. And then, you know, on, honestly, one of the things that we're going to have to, we, if we choose to do it this time, you know, we're going to have to go back and look at that whole sign ordinance because um, there was a Supreme Court decision after we passed it that changed the whole parameters around signs. Oh, really? Um, yeah. yeah. Basically, all sign ordinances in America are now unconstitutional and not enforceable. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's exactly right. It's almost like like a lot of these ordinances are going through it. You kind of wish there was like a paragraph of like intent next to it. Like what were yeah. problem were you trying to solve? Because sometimes I find like like if like there's different ways to go about it. Like sometimes you go into it and you're like, how can we word this? How can we make sure it like works? And then without stepping back and like, do we even need this? Like, is yeah. there a problem that this is solving? Or are we just trying to fix language on something that's not even needed? So I think when we look through it, we need to use that lens. Like, is this problem that it was probably trying to solve? Is it even a problem anymore? Right. Well, it was, it was funny because the, the sign ordinance was um, triggered by Landry Furniture. I don't know if you guys remember Landry yeah, Furniture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Dutton building? And they were going out of business for like five years. Yeah. They put signs all over town, all like in other, like on the side of the road, like all over the place. And so that was one of the things that like really sparked the debate. So there was one, I'm um, just looking through my notes from the ordinance review because it feels like it was a million years ago, even though yeah. it was only last summer. Um, one thing that uh, I remember, it's, it's pretty minor, but there's a couple committees that they say that in order to be a member, you have to be a registered voter. Right. And we thought oh, that there could be a person who has a green card, but they're not, you know, so we just thought maybe that should just be resident or maybe they're resident. 17, but they're- No, really it wasn't even resident actually, because um, there's people that are on our committees that aren't residents, they work in East Hampton. So 
That's um, true. Yeah. It's like we just have to have an interest in East Hampton, whether because of work or living or you know. Yeah, that yeah. that one seems like um one that we want to would want to definitely dig into a little bit um because we'll want to figure out that that correct way to phrase that so yeah i mean oh salem you're whoops he's frozen well i mean i feel like we have an appointment committee so it's like i feel like it shouldn't be possible um so that's a good one you're you're cutting out okay I would say we have like an appointment committee to vet people. So it's almost, I, I was like, I would hate to make it very restrictive at all. It's like if someone comes no. forward and it's just some random person on the internet who's like, you know, anti-vax and wants to join a committee and they don't have nothing to do with East Hampton, like hmm. just an example. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we could, we would not confirm their appointment, but to put restrictions seems like maybe unnecessary since we have a vetting process. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what, um do you guys remember what section that is um, uh, of chapter two article three yeah chapter two okay chapter two article yep that's great a number of reasons why that... you might not be able to register to vote because i think if we have a list of these that we you know because um, some of them are like the keeping of swine the you know yeah. the skinny dipping like these are like <laughs> we can we can yeah. bounce those pretty easy but like these ones i think are going to be good to be able to dig into yeah, yeah, I mean, if, if you want, I don't mind kind of going through them and grouping them, um, okay. unless we're just doing that right now. Kind of, we're pretty much doing that right now. But well, if you want, if you, I mean, um, uh, it would probably make sense just as part of the minutes, maybe just or uh, or on a separate thing to just say, okay, here are the ones that are like really easy to move mm -hmm. out, and here are the ones we want to dig into a little bit more, mm -hmm. so we can focus our attention in the right spot. But mm -hmm. I mean, I, I feel like we have a, a good start at least. Yeah. yeah, and and maybe what we can do is we can um, uh, for the next meeting, uh, everybody can take a look and see if there's anything that we didn't catch, and and um, we can start separating those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I could do is I, I can take the report that we sent out, and just if you want, I could do this and just turn it into like a spreadsheet. That'd be and perfect. And then we could decide like which things are low hanging fruit, which things mm -hmm. we should do but later, which things are probably better for public safety. I mean, I know the public safety is also, and Salem, you're on both, right? I'm on both. Yeah. We already so sent certain ones to public safety though, because there was two, two sets like in the report and there was a group, they were already grouped for public safety and they already yeah. went to public safety. Oh, well, great. Yep. So, so we, have, we, have, we have those in a separate pile. <laughs> yeah. So, cool. so I'll just go back and find the ordinance pile. Perfect. Yeah, when you're grouping them, like, or when you're making the spreadsheet, like, you can also add a column, like, who we need to seek advisement from, like, who, what input, do, what stakeholders do we need to? Right. Yeah. Good point. Them. What do we actually have to do? I'm just sort of sketch out a, a plan. Yeah. Yeah, Sounds yeah. good. It's, it's funny. Section eight point six uh, sixty two. Yeah. It needs updating. And I thought it said cornhole. I said, <laughs> are we going to make cornhole the East Hampton's official sport? Cornhole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is cornhole? Oh, Which maybe. I imagine is probably like a hole in the ground where you put your used coal or where you stored your coal or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. That's, that's great. I think that's, that's um, a good start. And um, uh, I think, so the only other thing that we have on that isn't actively engaged, because we have Juneteenth public hearing coming up, um, and we have the joint hearing with the planning board working on the um, zoning. So the only other thing is the vacant storefront ordinance. Um, and Lindsay, are, have you been following that at all? Do you, do you um, know? I would like an update. I've been following it some, but um, I don't think I kept where it is last. Okay, so just as the update, so we're in still the very preliminary stages of discussing it. Um, uh, basically, the EDIC had reached out to us, um, and they had an idea. They had been meeting on it, and so we put them on our agenda. Um, we suspended our rules so we could talk to them. And, um, you know, they had some really interesting ideas about vacant storefronts, um, and so we picked it up, and... Um, we have a, a like a sample ordinance, but you know I think one of the things that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to like dig 
a little bit deeper into it because we have, you know, COVID concerns. We have, um, you know, a, I think it's our duty to make sure that it's right for East Hampton, um, that it's not just a cookie cutter from another community. And, um, and so we have basically really just started to discuss um, what that could look like. Uh, and so, you know, our, our next steps are going to be to start looking at the, the content of the ordinance, brainstorming some ideas for, you know, potential, like, is there a fine? Is there, a, you know, a, a fee to register these vacant storefronts? What, what could be the um, reasons why people could be exempt from it? Um, you know, how long do people have to make sure they do something with the space? What happens if they don't? That kind of thing. And then, you know, bring back the EDIC and some of the stakeholders, some of the local businesses, and, and start having a collaborative path towards making something that works. Mm -hmm. um, and I think all of us can agree that it's probably a, an important thing to be thinking about right now. Um, so um, do you have any questions? No, I was reading up on it. It was something that it was actually something I'd read about a few years ago, um, and I was kind of I I was glad to see that it came up because yeah. we definitely have that issue, especially with our downtown thriving, and then there's certain obvious places that are just seeming to be happy in their vacant state. Um, right. <laughs> that's that's like the, the the happy in the vacant state is the thing that I think is that I I'm sort of caught up on with this is. Like, I think this is a good idea, but, but these, like a lot of these buildings, right? Someone's paying city taxes every year mm -hmm. to just sit on this building and make it and have it vacant. I mean, there's a difference, right? There's some places where you have a block with a, or a, you have a building with four storefronts and three of them are occupied. And one of them is like maintained, but has been vacant for a while. But then you have some buildings that have just been abandoned and are like, condemned and uninhabitable right, right. and unsafe right. these are sort of I, I do feel like these are slightly different things i'm not saying that like either one is great but i do think we need to it's maybe you need, you need to just consider them slightly differently but then well, the big question safe, yeah. what's that well i think like one the first category you're mentioning they're actually unsafe i think they you know yeah. they create unsafe situations the other one yeah. is just more like it's like a, it's like impeding progress and other like public serving businesses to be there. <laughs> but then like, so then the other question that I have though, is if somebody's willing to sit on a building and pay probably thousands of dollars of property taxes a year for a building that they're doing nothing with, like what is the actual incentive that actually gets somebody to, start thinking about that differently that that i guess is the thing that i that like i don't have an answer to that but i just sort of as a like earworm like that that's just kind of like the thing that i've been stuck with is like i don't i don't want to create something that like isn't you know we, we just give somebody an administrative task but it's not right. actually convincing the building owners to actually do anything anything differently I hear what you're saying because, like, a hundred dollar fine if they're paying thousands of dollars is like whatever. Um, I think part of it is, and I, I hate to use the word shaming, but like the public recognition, like if it becomes like a community desire, and you and you know, I don't know if that's going to change things, but if it's like publicly acknowledged that this community would like you to not be holding this space for your storage at Main Street. Hmm. And, so and that's actually that is yeah. actually one of the the strategies that kind of is considered a best practice is for the city to have kind of a clearinghouse of the vacant properties where you know people from the community can see you know they can go and maybe it would be on our website and they could see how long the property's been vacant who owns it you know what if it's for lease what the rent would be you know that kind of stuff so it would give people and then a, another thing that I saw was a place within that context where people could submit ideas for things that could go there, you know, that they would want to do. Like, I want to, I would like to have a bakery there, you know, and then almost like um, bouncing ideas into the community of what they would love to see there. And then trying to find support in the community to like bring that forward. 
Um, but Tom, I, I do think that you're absolutely right. There's going to have to be a, a, a two pronged approach, an approach for the buildings that are completely empty and are, um, and are habitually like vacant and bl basically blighted. Right? right. And then an approach for, you know, um, just vacant storefronts that we would love to see rented, but aren't necessarily a safety issue or aren't necessarily a blight issue. Um, and, and I think that we might have. have to, like, um, you know, that could be like having the city post that because um, that could be, oh, am I unstable again? We, uh, you were, you're back. We, we got it. <laughs> okay, cool. So, but, you know, I think that that could be part of it is you know, um, because if someone, I mean, it would, it would be really interesting to me if someone's charging, you know, they have there's three vacant storefronts all in a row and two are like in the same ballpark and one is like $4,000 more a month, you know, or something like that. And I'm um, trying to establish, ha trying to encourage people to have reasonable rents and maybe encouraging them to lower the rent a little bit, but that would have to be, it's like the carrot and the stick approach, right? Which we talked about last time. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, this is going to have to be, we're going to have to put our thinking caps on for this one. It's going to be interesting, I think. I have a question. Yeah. Has there been any communication with these business owners? Yes. Yep. yep. And so the just... EDIC reached out to all the business owners that I believe uh, all of them had vacant storefronts and, and basically threw this idea out there and talked to them about that. And so okay. I, I believe that is part of the the uh, information that they sent over to us. Okay. So... But I can double check on that. If I, I'm trying to remember, I don't really remember reading any responses. So yeah, I think it might have just, I think it might have just been like um, them sending it out and um, and letting know they were looking at it. But Omar has his hand up. So good evening, Mr. President. Thank you. <laughs> I I know a little bit about it, and some uh, building owners received the letter after after those meetings was done. So oh, right. that that's possibly none of them got response. Uh, because that got, they got the letter, uh, the notification after the EDIC uh, met. So, you know, and, and basically what that means is that we can um, pick up where they left off and reach out to those those building owners again as well. Because, uh, I mean, honestly, this should be something done in, in, a, in a collaborative way with the business community. We don't, you know, um, I think all of us can acknowledge that and, and I think the business owners would acknowledge that if we have thriving things happening in our downtown, then it's going to encourage more activity at all downtown businesses. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I think bringing everybody on board to, to really try to, uh, and, and I also think that maybe the chamber of commerce too, would be another, um, entity to be able to like work with us on this, to, um, at least be uh, involved in discussions, you know, mm -hmm. um, Tom, you have a thought? I, I so I guess where I where I am on this like one of, just from from my putting my like economist hat on for a second what I really want to understand is like why are these buildings vacant like because you'd think that you'd want rent yeah or whatever like you'd think is it like a tax thing is it like I could understand for instance like uh where like Coco used to be right. I could understand that uh, building owner being like, "Well, I want another high end restaurant in here. No one's looking to start a high end restaurant in the middle of Omicron, so I'm just right. going to sit on this for a little while until I find like the perfect tenant." I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I don't necessarily think that they need to put like a spirit Halloween or something in there, you know, just to keep it. <laughs> uh occupied until um you, you know like like i don't know that that's necessarily like but you know like i like i think that there's that's where, where i guess where, what i'm trying to figure out is like i don't know if i fully understand the decisions that are being made here and until i do it's hard for me to really understand what sort of carrots and or sticks should be leveraged to get the results that we want yeah, I really appreciate what you're saying, Tom, because I would like to just 
I don't know if it's like have a public, I don't know if it's a public hearing or what it is, but like invite and say, we want to discuss the reasons and we want you to be while we're making this policy. And like, if we could get them to come in front of us, not like in a collaborative state, like this, like our goal is to have a thriving East Hampton with opportunities for different businesses to move in. And I think it's pretty simple to understand why we wouldn't want just like obviously dilapidated businesses, but just also a main business just just used as storage. Right. Um, and um, you're right. Like maybe, maybe well, maybe we'll learn something in that conversation because otherwise, I'm just guessing. Like for that storage situation, I'm like it's probably maybe it's just inertia. Like uh, been storing a lot of stuff there a long time. You know, his tenants uh -huh. can park there in the parking lot. It's not broken, don't fix it. I don't know, you know, yeah. but maybe if we really invited them to be part of the progress in East Hampton, um, started that way, you know, my optimistic spirit. <laughs> I, 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 I think that, that's great. I, I think that's a good idea. And, and I'm happy, you know, I think maybe what we can do is um, between now and our and the meeting where we decide to dig into this, this particular piece is to maybe try to dig into Tom's question. Mm -hmm. which is, you know, why are these places potentially empty? And, I mean, we could even open it up to, be, you know, like, what, what I, you know, what do community members, what would they love to see in these places, you know? Because mm -hmm. um, that's, that's an interesting tact, too. There might be a great idea out there that a, a landlord just hasn't heard yet, you know? Um, yeah. And so, and now, Tom, for your piece, do you think besides having kind of like a an open meeting where we allow people to come in and just speak on this and and share their thoughts um from your perspective because i think that's a really important piece that you brought up do you do you, can you think of any ways that we can kind of dive into that and and start to understand that better yeah i mean i i can try and look into it a bit myself because yeah. like I think we, sh I, I love this community conversation idea, but just for what it's worth, I also think no one's going to show up at like a public yeah. meeting and be like, yeah, well, I actually can write this loss off on my taxes, and that makes more sense than renovating it. So, yeah. like, well, we know, no I mean, we, you know, we know from Northampton that that is probably one of the things, you know, and and like, and I think that's that's probably you know the part of the catalyst of this is we don't want to see these properties sitting vacant for years and years on end or if someone's just like yeah i'm just speculating on this and i think the market's gonna be better in two years than it is right now like no one's just gonna say that um right. i do want to hear what they do have to say but i just think it's one of those things where like there it could be that there'd be some other stuff there um what i can do i mean i i can you know i i like i've i've got resources in the policy world that I can reach out to professional connections who, who might have some ideas about this. And I can just do a little bit of, do a little bit of research. And it could be that the EDIC honestly understands this dynamic yeah. on a level that we don't, because, you know, they gave the presentation about the ordinance itself, but they might have some, some knowledge beyond that. So just maybe bringing them in for another idea. chat might be, might be a good thing. So maybe, so how about this as far as like timeline? Um, how about for the next meeting that where we focus on this piece, um, we invite EDIC um, and, and kind of get some perspective from them. Um, maybe even look at the sample ordinance and spitball some ideas that we might, you know, each of us might have for that. And bounce it off them. See, you know, like, oh, what, what was the reasoning behind this? Like, we think that the registration fee should be six hundred dollars, and that if they don't do that, there should be a hundred dollar monthly fee or something, right? Right. So just like yeah. spitball some things that we could that we could bounce off of them, and then once we kind of have that piece in place, then we could oh, then we could start looking at this community perspective to try to invite some of the business owners in to get their perspective and and see how this could potentially help or harm them um and and that should hopefully after those two things we should be you know positioned to start making some some progress towards uh language and direction and that type of thing that seem reasonable enough 
I absolutely agree. Can I make one one last point on this? Please. This is a little bit nitpicky, but I do think when we talk about this, what we're talking about here is rarely in East Hampton, although not never, business owners. Like Mm -hmm. most of these businesses rent. These are landowners and building owners. Um, That's not universally true, but I think if you were to take a poll, I think probably the majority the strong majority of businesses in East Hampton um, rent their space. And so the folks that we're talking about here are, I mean, I guess landlording is a business. So you could say that they're business owners in that respect, but it's really like they're, they're the, the people that we're talking about. Like if we talk to the, the folks at the chamber of commerce, like I think that's a great perspective to get, but I doubt that, commercial landlords are generally members of the chamber of commerce that's a good point although some of the business owners do own other businesses yeah for sure so i don't know if they're in there for their business i don't know yeah it's true there could be someone who bought a building and they have a business in one part of it and they rent the other parts out or or whatever there's another part of town (laughs) yeah or they have a business and then they just bought a building separately yeah, there's all sorts of complicated relationships that people have here. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, as we kind of move through this, we might see that there's pieces that we want to, like, zero in on and, and mm-hmm. focus on now. And there might be pieces, like, um, the, that we want to wait on and we want to maybe take a slower tact on. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, here's what I'll do is um, I'll reach out to the EDIC and see if they can come for our next meeting on this and um that and, and i think for our homework if we just take a look at the sample ordinance and you know spitball some ideas how we could separate those commercial big um like vacant long-term vacant i guess places uh versus the the short-term like coco ish you know you want to get a high-end restaurant there that makes sense like of course you're not going to rent it to spirit halloween <laughs> right like of course so i think that i think that's a good a good place for us to to go um, let me just get my calendar out here. Are you guys good to start maybe looking at a couple of dates? Yeah. Sure. Are Thursdays sure. what we're going to do now or? Um, Thursdays are, <laughs> it depends. Like I can be, I'm pretty flexible, but I'm not. So, <laughs> um, March is going to free up for me a lot. So like once I get to March, I'm going to be like super flexible. So we can meet a lot in March if you guys want. <laughs> I'm cool with whatever. Um, Wednesdays are always bad for me, and right. Mondays Fine, are yes. usually bad for me. But Did you say Mondays? Yeah, because that's when my okay. practice is. But um, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays usually work. Yeah. Okay. So, like, um, for example, Thursday the seventeenth. It looks like I'm pretty. I'm uh, February. Um, I'm free. I don't know if that works for you all. Well, February seventeenth. Yes. Do you want to do you want to put that one in for the um, the ordinance review piece? Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. So we'll do Thursday the seventeenth, six o'clock for you guys, or six thirty or something. It's all good for me. Okay. Whatever you say, six seven. Six, yeah. I, I, is it is there any chance we can do six thirty on on Thursday? It's fine with me. Is that too late? It's fine with me. No, that's fine. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put that at 6.30, and I'm going to earmark it for um, the ordinance review. Cool. Cool, very good. And let's see. Um, that, puts, that puts me into March for, for the vacant storefront. Is that okay with you guys? That's fine with me. Yeah. One okay. thing I yeah, would just like to say, I had a conversation with Jeff Bag pretty recently. And he said that the planning department is relatively close to coming back to us with a revised solar ordinance. Oh, okay, good. So just in terms of things that we are going to have coming at us, that is a thing. And um, there's no reason we can't work on those in in tandem, but that potentially could be a a big lift. So just something you might want to keep in mind. Good to know. Good to know. Um, how about uh, this March 
third work for you guys to to try to get the EDIC in for us? Yeah. Uh, how's that March third work for you, Lindsay? Yep. Okay. All right. So order nice. Uh, and I'm gonna put that at six thirty again if that's okay. Okay. And I'm gonna invite the EDIC. Great. All right. Sounds pretty good. And so uh, just a reminder, um, March 8th, we have the continued public hearing with the planning board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just wanted to make sure you guys had that. And I think that we're probably in an okay spot. How do you guys feel? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn then. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. And let's see, Tom Peake. Aye. Lindsay Rothschild. Aye. I vote aye as well. That was a very efficient. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Sure thing. <laughs> Thank you.